Welcome back to the channel. Before we dive in today, I need to tell you, this isn't your usual content. We're breaking into something more dystopian, something real. My goal, it's to lift that veil from your eyes to help you see the world as it is, unfiltered and raw. Too many of us are stuck in this comfortable bubble, living in a fantasy, avoiding the harsh truths all around us. I'm not here to give you all the answers or offer some magic solution, but if you've ever felt that nagging itch in your mind, that sense that something's off, you're in the right place. Thank you for all the support, the likes, and the comments. And for those of you who are new, yeah, I know most of you watching aren't subscribed yet. If you want to help the channel grow, hit that subscribe button. It would mean the world and it keeps us going on this journey of truth. Let's get into it. It starts with this charming illusion, love, companionship, forever. Society sells it hard. Everyone's got their fairy tales and Instagram perfect couples smiling like life is some kind of Hallmark special. They don't show you the part where you're drained dry in a courtroom while your ex sits across from you smug, knowing the system's on their side. They don't show you the part where your kids become weapons, not people, just tools, used to keep you in line like some twisted chess game where you're never allowed to win. And let's be real, men are losing. We're not just losing, we're getting slaughtered. Divorce isn't just a breakup, it's an execution. I'm not saying all women are evil masterminds sitting around scheming to destroy their husbands, but let's not kid ourselves. When it comes to divorce, the system has decided who's the villain, and it's us. Men are walking into family court like lambs to the slaughter. We lose our homes, our money, our dignity, and in too many cases, our kids. Those little people we've stayed up with, those school plays we rushed to after another mind-numbing day at work, gone, just like that. Because the courts have this antiquated idea that fathers are just weekend babysitters. Let me paint you a picture. Imagine you've worked your ass off for 10 years, you've climbed the corporate ladder, listened to your boss drone on about synergy and team building until you could scream, all to make sure you're doing right by your family. The same family that, after divorce, you get to see twice a month if you're lucky. And during those two weekends, you're basically chaperoning, praying your kids don't forget who you are while your ex has more time than God to paint you as the absentee father, the distant one. Meanwhile, you're the one hemorrhaging cash just to keep up with child support payments. That's what gets me. Child support. Those two words are enough to make any man start sweating. It sounds fair, right? Support your kids, pay for their needs. But in reality, it's a noose. It's not about supporting your kids. It's about draining you for the audacity of existing in their lives. I've seen guys who barely make enough to pay rent, but the court will garnish their wages like they're swimming in cash. And if you miss a payment, God help you. The system will treat you like a fugitive, throw you in jail if they feel like it, because being locked up is clearly the best way to help your kids. You're expected to provide from behind bars. You know, it's kind of funny in the most soul crushing way. We were taught to work hard, build something, be providers, but for what? To have everything stripped away in a courtroom that already decided you were guilty before you even walked in? You can't beat the system because the system is built on the assumption that you're the problem. Even if you were the perfect husband, even if your marriage fell apart for reasons completely out of your control, you're still the one who has to pick up the tab. And this isn't some angry rant from a guy who's bitter about a breakup. It's facts, statistics men are losing and they're losing everything financially ruined career dead-ended and then as if that wasn't enough emotionally devastated because you might never be able to have a real relationship with your kids again you don't come back from that the courts don't just take your assets they take your will to fight and when you're that broken down what do they expect you to do smile and nod go quietly into the night i've seen too many guys hit the breaking point the despair isn't just a side effect, it's the whole damn system working perfectly. It's like they've perfected the art of crushing men's spirits and society just watches. You know, young men are catching on though. They're smart. They've seen the game, seen their uncles and fathers and older brothers go through the ringer and they're opting out. Why wouldn't they? I sure as hell would have if I had known. You think the younger generation doesn't see what's happening? That they don't hear the horror stories? They do. They see men lose their homes, their retirement, their chance at happiness. And they ask, why even bother getting married? They shouldn't. And I'll say that again for the people in the back. They shouldn't. Getting married today, if you're a man, is like signing a contract that says, I'm okay with losing half of everything I've ever worked for, including my mental stability. And I know there are people who will roll their eyes and say, oh, that's so cynical. What about love? Yeah, what about it? 
Love's great and all, but love doesn't stand a chance against the machine that's built to screw you over the second it turns into divorce. Hell, even if you try to protect yourself with a prenup, good luck. Prenups are supposed to be your armor, right? Your way of saying, at least if this goes south, I've got a parachute. But guess what? Family courts treat prenups like they're written in invisible ink. Suddenly, the agreement you thought would save you is as worthless as yesterday's coffee grounds. The system, once again, decides who's the bad guy. And if you think your kids will save you, that's the saddest joke of all. Kids become bargaining chips. I've seen it happen too many times. You want to see your kids? Pay up. Or worse, you'll see them when I say you can, and if you piss me off, you won't. They don't say that directly, of course. They just manipulate the situation until you're jumping through hoops just to get a couple of hours with the people you give your life for. So, yeah, the younger generation isn't stupid. They're avoiding marriage like it's a flaming dumpster, and who can blame them? You can't make a logical argument for men to rush into a system that's already rigged against them. And don't hit me with that marriage is about commitment crap. Commitment to what? To being steamrolled by a system that doesn't care if you were a good dad or a good husband? The minute that divorce paper hits the table, it's like the last 10 years of your life are erased, and the only thing that matters is how much you can pay and how little you get to keep. Is this what our fathers dreamed of when they told us to settle down and find a good woman? Is this what they wanted when they preached about family values? Maybe it worked in their generation when the system wasn't so obviously out to bankrupt men emotionally and financially. But now, it's a circus and we're the clowns. That's why young men are checking out. They're building lives that don't depend on relationships and they're right to do it. Why put yourself through the ringer for a system that's just waiting to gut you like a fish? Why sacrifice your future for something that could be taken from you with a single signature? It's no wonder you've got guys opting for solitude over marriage. Hell, it's almost a badge of honor now. You dodged the bullet, you didn't get suckered into the con. And marriage, what's left of it anyway, is starting to look like a relic of a bygone era, something people used to do before we all woke up and realized the courts turned it into a death sentence for men. But we're not supposed to talk about this, right? Because like, it makes us sound bitter or angry. Well, here's the thing, we are bitter. We are angry because we didn't sign up to be taken to the cleaners for trying to build a family. We signed up for love, for partnership, for something worth fighting for. But what we got was a system that chews us up and spits us out, leaving us with nothing but the hollow shell of what we thought life would be. This isn't some over the top sob story, this is reality, the kind most men are terrified to admit out loud. But the truth is, if we don't start talking about it, nothing will change. And maybe, just maybe, young men won't have to keep avoiding marriage like the plague. Because right now, can you blame them? I sure as hell can't. You know, it's funny in a dark, twisted way how the system is designed. Family courts are this well-oiled machine, perfectly engineered to keep men down. It's like they took every insecurity we have about being good fathers, good husbands, hell, just being good men, and weaponized it. They turned the very things that should bring us joy, our families, into chains to drag us down. And the worst part, most of us don't even realize the trap until it's already clamped down on our leg, bleeding us dry. Take custody, for example. They call it a battle like it's some fair fight. Spoiler alert, it's not. The moment you step foot in that courtroom, you're at a disadvantage. You're just a paycheck, a weekend babysitter, an inconvenience to the life your ex is now building without you. And the court? They don't see you as a father, a protector, or someone who actually gives a damn about his kids. No, to them, you're just the other parent the one who isn't naturally nurturing enough to raise his own children full-time. It's, it's laughable. The idea that a father's role is somehow less important, that our love for our kids is somehow secondary to a mother's. You'd think we were living in the 1950s, where dads were just the paycheck and the occasional disciplinarian, not the actual hands-on parents we've become. Fathers today are changing diapers, attending parent-teacher conferences, teaching their kids how to ride bikes, how to handle life. But does any of that matter in court? Nope. You're just there to provide financially, and if you're lucky, you'll get to see your kids every other weekend like some glorified camp counselor. And the courts love to talk about the best interests of the child. That phrase gets thrown around so much, it's lost all meaning. But let's be real, the best interests of the child have nothing to do with you as a father. The court doesn't care if you've been the one getting up at 3 a.m. to soothe nightmares, or if you're the one driving your kid to soccer practice in the rain. All that matters is keeping the status quo, which means keeping you at arm's length from your own damn family. They'll say it's about stability, about maintaining the child's routine, 
but what they really mean is that they don't want to disrupt the mother's life. They don't want to rock the boat because deep down, the system still operates on this outdated belief that mothers are the primary parents. And so they hand down these decisions like they're doling out rations, just enough to keep you barely involved, just enough to make you feel like you're doing something, but it's never enough to actually make a difference. And then there's alimony. Oh man, if you ever wanted to see the system's bias in action, just look at alimony. Now, I get it. If you were a stay-at-home parent and sacrificed a career to raise a family, sure, there should be some support while you get back on your feet, but that's not what alimony is about. It's not about fairness. It's about punishment. It's about making sure that men keep paying long after the marriage is dead and buried. You could be scraping by, living in some tiny, rundown apartment while your ex is living in the house you paid for, driving the car, you're still making payments on, all while you're cutting checks to keep her comfortable, and the court doesn't care if your life is falling apart. They don't care if you can barely make ends meet. As long as that alimony check keeps coming, the system is satisfied. And let me tell you, alimony is just a fancy word for legalized theft. You're paying for a lifestyle that you're no longer a part of, for a relationship that's over, for a future that was stolen from you the second those divorce papers were signed. And don't even get me started on what happens when you lose your job or God forbid you get sick. The courts don't care. You're still expected to keep up with those payments or you'll find yourself on the wrong side of a jail cell wondering how the hell you got there. I've seen guys lose everything, literally everything, their homes, their savings, their retirement funds, all drained because the courts decided they had to keep paying for a life that no longer exists. And the kicker, it doesn't even matter if your ex moves on, finds someone else. Hell, she could be living with some other guy, but as long as she doesn't get remarried on paper, you're still on the hook for alimony. It's like you're financing her new life with someone else, paying for your own replacement. And society tells you to suck it up, to be a man about it, but what does that even mean anymore? Does being a man mean silently suffering while your life is dismantled in front of you? Does it mean accepting that you'll never be as involved in your kids' lives as you want to be because the courts have already decided that you're just a visitor, not a real parent? And we wonder why young men are avoiding marriage like the plague. They've seen the wreckage left behind by the divorce industry. They've seen their fathers and uncles and brothers destroyed by a system that claims to be fair, but in reality is anything but. They've seen men reduced to shadows of their former selves, hollowed out by the endless grind of alimony and child support with nothing left to show for it but the occasional photo of their kids from the two weekends a month they get to play dad. Marriage today isn't a partnership, it's a contract with the courts, one that men are learning to read the fine print on. And that fine print, it's filled with warnings. Proceed with caution. May cause loss of assets, emotional stability, and access to your children. And honestly, who can blame them for walking away? They've seen the trap, and they're not stupid enough to fall into it. Because let's face it, the system doesn't care about men. It doesn't care about fairness. It cares about maintaining this outdated, broken structure where men are disposable, where fathers are afterthoughts, and where women are handed the keys to the kingdom, no questions asked. And here's the thing, it's not about being anti-women. It's not about being some misogynistic asshole who thinks women don't deserve anything. It's about fairness. It's about looking at a system that's supposed to be about equality and realizing it's anything but. And when men speak up about it, they're called bitter, angry, or worse, misogynists. But how can you not be angry when your entire life is reduced to a dollar sign? When the love you have for your children is dismissed because some judge decided you're not as necessary to their well-being as their mother? when your hard-earned money is siphoned away to support a life you're no longer part of. It's not bitterness, it's not anger, it's survival. It's waking up every day and knowing that the system is rigged and the only way to protect yourself is to avoid it altogether. And that's what men are doing. They're opting out, not because they don't want families, but because they know the price they'll pay if it all goes south. And that's the tragedy of it all. Men wanna be fathers, they wanna be providers, they wanna build something meaningful, but the system, it's taught them that doing so is the quickest way to lose everything. So yeah, maybe we're angry, maybe we're bitter, but it's not without reason. The system isn't broken. It's working exactly how it was designed, to take everything from men and leave them with nothing. And until we start acknowledging that, until we start talking about it openly, nothing's gonna change. Men will keep losing, 
and the system will keep grinding us down because that's what it was built to do. And the saddest part, society doesn't even care. Here's the truth. Men are waking up. We've been quiet for too long, conditioned to accept the hits, to absorb the losses, to be the strong silent types while everything we work for is stripped away. But now we're starting to talk. We're starting to say enough. We're tired of being treated like disposable ATMs. We're tired of a system that sees us as nothing more than dollar signs and weekend visitors in our own children's lives. We're done being silent while the divorce industry rips families apart and calls it justice. The system doesn't care about fairness. It doesn't care about balance. It cares about one thing, keeping the wheels turning. And those wheels, they're powered by our pain, by the wealth and time and relationships we're forced to sacrifice. But here's the thing, the more men wake up, the more we stop playing their game, the more that system starts to crack. Young men aren't signing up for marriage anymore. They're looking at the wreckage around them and they're choosing to walk away, not from love, not from family, but from a broken system that has failed them and will continue to fail them as long as we stay silent. The days of blind trust are over. Men are no longer walking into the trap willingly. We see it for what it is and we're saying no more. So yeah, it's time for a change and change doesn't come from staying quiet. It comes from speaking out, from standing together, from demanding something better because the system won't fix itself. It's not built to. We have to be the ones to tear it down and rebuild something that works for everyone not just one side. So to everyone who's watched this, who's felt that gut-wrenching pain of losing everything in a system rigged against them, thank you for sticking with me. You're not alone, we're not alone. And if we keep talking, if we keep pushing, maybe we can stop this from happening to the next generation. If you've got a story to share, drop it in the comments. Let's get the conversation going. And if this resonated with you, if you believe things need to change, hit the like button, subscribe, and share this because the more voices we have, the harder we are to ignore. Thanks for watching. Stay strong.